Hello everyone and welcome back to Banjo-Tooie on the Nintendo 64. I am one more sheep yet again and today ladies and gentlemen we're going to collect the last of the jiggies and start making our way to the end game. And to start things off we're returning to Grunty's Industries because there is a switch right over yonder that we can now access using, uh, well, using Banjo's sack pack ability. And uh... Yeah, we can actually use this now to get hold of this fantastic jiggy. Mmm, yes, how delicious. Oh, And, uh, that's not the only jiggy we will be picking up in this world, because, uh, if you guys remember back down in the air conditioning area, well, we can, we basically left out a jiggy down there that we can actually pick up right now, so, uh, let's just head on all the way back down and... We do need to be Banjo alone, I believe, to actually get this jiggy. So, uh, you know, pop down here without Kazooie, pop down here with only Banjo, and we're, we're basically on our way. This is the last jiggy of the game, ladies and gentlemen. All 90 of them. Oh, can you feel excitement? I know I can. Oh, it makes me feel all tingly inside. Mmm, yes. And of course, you know, it's just it's just very nice for me to actually finally get this LP done and dusted, you know. I'm honestly quite happy about this because this LP's been going on for months upon months on end. I've always been putting it off for one reason or another or things gone in the way in my real life being able, you know, blocking off from being able to finish off this LP. So it's very, it's nice for me to finally finish up this and actually be able to work on other projects that I want to work on, you know, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, you know, pop over here, go into the waste disposal plant, and uh, it's time to pick up our final, final, final jiggy. And it, it's basically underneath this group, so we do need to use this, uh, I forgot the name of this power. I always forget the names of the moves in this game, but we do need to get this power in order to, use, to jump down here. But there we go. We got all the jiggies. Hell to the yeah. And, uh... I don't know what that treat he's on about in the cinema selection screen is because I had a quick look after this and I couldn't find anything in there that I hadn't seen before, so I was really confused by that. I don't know. Hmm. But uh, yeah, with that, let's go and talk to Jiggy Wiggy and get the final Jiggy Wiggy's Temple puzzles done and dusted. And there's more than one Jiggy Wiggy's top. Jiggy Wiggy Temple puzzle this time around, ladies and gentlemen. There's a. Uh, there's two for the final, final world, because this by here is actually what's going to gain us entry to the final world, as you'd probably expect. But we can't access the final boss until we do the next puzzle after this one, and uh, it can be a little bit of a, like a cock tease if you're playing through this game the first time through. You know, you access this world, then suddenly you reach the top of the tower, and then, oh, you need to get a few more jiggies and do another puzzle before you can access the final boss, and I know, it, it just drives me mad, so... I advise basically when you get to this point, just just do all these puzzles at one go, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But I digress. Anyway, we've seen puzzles all the way through up until this point again, so I'm just gonna speed this up for you guys. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen, with that we have unlocked all of the areas of the game. We have unlocked the final, final stage. But before we do actually access that, we do have another super secret jigsaw puzzle to complete. Just like in Banjo-Kazooie, they do have jigsaw puzzles that you complete after the fact. And uh, this one is significantly more difficult because, well, all the jigsaw pieces are turned. We can use the C-sticks to turn the jigsaw pieces to fit in, into the thing and... Uh, you don't get any reward for actually doing this, this is literally a bragging rights sort of dealio, and honestly, it's, uh, uh, I'm crap at it. <laughs> I'm not gonna beat around the bush, I'm crap at this, and it, it, it's kind of annoying, actually, because, uh, 
I, I don't know, I've never been particularly good at jigsaw puzzles, and it's the same with the Banjo-Kazooie one where we had the super secret jigsaw puzzles, why I just, I was just terrible with it. I could not do anything that I, you know, I could never do any. I can't figure out the right places to put the things, that's basically what I'm saying. But, uh, anyway, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because again, it's just another jigsaw puzzle, so, uh, you know, bada bing, bada boom! <laughs> Hey, hey, yeah, whatever, whatever. I didn't want to do your stupid puzzle anyway. Again, it's a difficult puzzle you can do for bragging rights if you so choose, but, uh... Personally, I don't see the point in it because, you, you know, you don't actually get anything at all for doing it. But without any further ado, it's time to head on to the end game. right after we actually visit Honey Bee for the last time. I completely forgot about this to get our, um... Well, basically, get our final, final piece of health. And, uh... Don't know how much help it will really be in the final boss, mind you. It's only one piece of health, but uh, there we are. We can get it regardless, and uh, I guess more health the merrier, I suppose. Granted, the final boss shouldn't be too much of a trouble anyway, because I do have my uh, honey back cheat on, so, you know, I do have regenerative health as well. So it kind of makes me a bit, uh, a bit ridiculously overpowered, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, it's time to head on over to Quagmire and finally head on into the final final fortress of the game and it's kind of interesting with the final fortress of this game because um it feels like there was meant to be a whole world for the final fortress but th there isn't like, like technically what where we're going counts as a world but it isn't a full level and it really feels like that the game was built to have this as a full level because this the musical track for this final area we're going to it has a full, like, five minute long track, you know, and we only ever really get to hear it for maybe a minute, two minutes at most, you know? And, uh... I don't know, it, it just, I just... I always... I just get the feeling that this world we're about to go to... Most of it was cut for time reasons. It's, I, I just got that feeling in my head, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh... All in all... We're here, we are at the end game, ladies and gentlemen, so time to hit the war pad, which you don't need to press, but the war pad can be a little bit handy if you didn't get the final jigsaw puzzle done. Because uh, you can have a war pad by here, and there's a war pad to the very top of the tower that we'll need to deal with, but... Uh, you know, using the splitter pads and using Banjo and Kazooie's powers, we basically need to go across here and open up the doorway. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? And, uh... There's not really much to say about this place, you know, it's it, it, it it's foreboding, it feels end gamey. It just, I honestly feel like when, I just feel like something's missing about this place. And it, I, it just drives me off the wall insane. Anyway, if you're wondering how to open the laser gate, just uh, go behind the actual fortress itself and there's going to be a switch up here. And a Minjo. Yeah, bye buddy, sucks to be him. <laughs> Burned alive, mmm. Yes, oh. But, uh, if you do recall as well, I did mention previously in the playthrough that, uh, well, we fight Klungo three times. Well, it's about time for the third and final Klungo boss battle. And again, just like I previously mentioned, or at least I believe I previously mentioned this, uh, Klungo doesn't actually change in difficulty for the most part because uh, the di Klungo's phases, as I've already mentioned, I'll randomize each playthrough, so one playthrough you have a completely different set of moves against you, and another playthrough you have another set of moves, you know? So, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, it just seems kind of out of place just before the final, final, final gauntlet you have to fight Klungo again, which honestly isn't even that much difficult compared to any of the other times, you know? He doesn't take more hits to kill, he isn't faster, he just... Uses a different type of move, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But I digress. Anyway, this time around, ladies and gentlemen, he has the invulnerab no, for invulnerability, invincibility power up, and basically, uh, you just have to wander around, wait until you see him, and uh, just attack him. Woo! The only thing that does sort of actually get a little bit different, I will tell light, is the fact he will start aiming where you're going with his um, 
with his portions, which you can easily, easily, easily deal with just by, you know, running around in a circle, so it's really not that big a deal. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? What can I tell you? Indeed. Mm, yes. And uh, if you're quick enough about this boss fight in his phase, you can usually bip Klungo, like, immediately before he even has a chance to uh, run off, but... You know, if you're too quick, you bounce off his shield, and if you're too slow at hitting him, then you have to wander around and mindlessly swipe the air until you find him. But again, it's Klingo! He's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, he is done and dusted. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? What can I tell you? Indeed. Ah. But, uh... With uh, Klungo's having a little bit of a career crisis, so uh, it's time for him to uh, basically retire. What can I say? Future prospects not good with Mistress Grunty. No chance of promotion. No day is off. No pay. Why do you work for this woman? <laughs> Seriously. Ah. Uh. But anyway, he does actually follow up on his, uh, on his actual saying of actually making stupid games, because he actually makes uh, Klungo Saves the World, which is a game in, uh, it's like a mini game in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which, you know. But anyway, in traditional Banjo-Kazooie fashion, it's time for the end game quiz, and, uh, well, basically, this quiz show is basically, you know, it's just a quiz show, really. The Tower of Tra... Tower of Tragedy, Tower of, Mother Jesus Christ, Tower of Tragedy quiz. Basically, Grunty's gonna start quick firing off uh, questions and stuff and making us look at things in scenery and whatnot that we've been to and listen to things. And uh, we basically need to push the buzzer before our opponents and score higher than our opponents to win. And uh, I, again, I, just like in the quiz show of Banjo because we won, I do love this. It's does drag on though. That's the biggest issue with this quiz show in particular. It drags on way longer than it needs to. Like this, this is like a three round quiz. And uh, honestly, it shouldn't have been a three round quiz in my opinion. This, this entire sequence, I personally think they should have had this entire sequence to be about maybe one to two rounds long at most, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, there's not really too much I can really say about this because, again, it's just a quiz show. Bada bing, bada boom. So, uh... And honestly, after... I'm probably gonna explain some of the mechanics slightly about this and, uh, some general tips. And I'm probably just gonna speed past this because, uh, you know... But, of course, she's gonna say simple questions like this, like, What color are Banjo shorts to other harder questions and whatnot? And as long as you've been sort of... Kind of... Kind of, um... What's the word I'm looking for? As long as you've sort of kept your eye out as you've been progressing throughout the game, you shouldn't have any trouble with this for the most part, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, basically, yeah, it's a typical quiz show game. You just have to... You basically have to just uh, answer your questions right and get the most points, you know, ladies and gentlemen. And when you do get to the two different phases, things do change up a little bit, but... Uh, well, I say that, I, I should mean the final phase things changes up a little bit, which I'll talk about when we get to it, but... Again, it's a typical, um... It's a typical game, like, if you have general trivia knowledge of Banjo-Kazooie, then, uh... You'll have no problems whatsoever, that's mainly what I'm getting at, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you do lose at uh, one of these questions, you do lose two points. But... If you do win a question after another person loses it, you will get one point. And uh, whenever you succeed in getting a, pe a question the first time, you'll get two points for yourself as well. So uh, there we are. But again, there's not really much to say about this, so I'm just going to speed this up until we get to the actual round where things matter. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in a minute.
Christ, I've been speeding up a lot on this part. I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen, but there's really not much to say about a lot of this stuff. But anyway, once you get through the main quiz show itself with the other two uh, contestants, basically then we have to deal with Grunty herself. And she changes the rules up for the final round, so instead of us having to actually score score points and beat the other contestants this time around, uh, Grunty's going to give us a set score that we are going to need to beat. And uh, honestly, in my opinion, opinion this this round should have been the only round of this entire quiz show because then it would have been a hell of a lot less tedious you know ladies and gentlemen but uh basically grunty's gonna give us a score of 15 and uh the moment that we beat their score of 15 well we basically won you know ladies and gentlemen so just answers grunty answer grunty's questions as best you can and uh you know you should be able to get through this without any too much trouble you know ladies and gentlemen Again, I love this quiz show, but I honestly wish that it wasn't dragged on as long as it is, you know, it's an insanely, insanely long quiz show to actually do, and it's, uh, it can be very tedious, what can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you're, uh, playing through it. And even this, po this portion of the quiz show itself has its problems, like, once we hit 15 points and get over 15 points, even though we physically cannot lose at that point, she still keeps you know, drumming questions our way, and we don't even need to answer any of these questions, you know, after that point. We can basically just sort of sit there and go, okay, uh, just wait until the time runs out, because there is a time limit, as you can probably tell, you don't, I don't know, it's kind of weird, because you don't automatically win when you beat her score, and you think that would be the case, but no, she drags it on by asking you more and more and more questions that you can, you can just ignore, you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of, eh. It's kind of eh, you know, but, uh, you know, it can be very uh, heart pumping, I suppose, if you keep getting uh, things wrong constantly and you get unlucky with the questions that you don't really know much details about, you know, ladies and gentlemen, but, you know, most of these questions are obvious, obvious stuff and you shouldn't have too much trouble, and even if you do have trouble with it, eventually you'll be able to, um, get through without too much trouble like that what game banjo first appeared in that might trip some people up you know because he appeared in diddy kong racing first and not banjo kazooie and sometimes she'll throw the tricky uh, questions your way but you know for the most part easy peasy lemon squeezy what am i telling you what can i tell you indeed mm, yes <laughs> There we go. I had to speed that up. I, did, I didn't want you guys to uh, just sit through that again. <laughs> because there's no reason to sit through just constant questions that I'm just going to sit there and not even bother answering, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, there we go. That is the quiz show done and dusted. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Indeed. And of course, with this, this is basically us leading up to the final boss. And... Much like Banjo Kazooie won, uh, once we beat the quiz show itself, we get greeted with a credit sequence. Uh, thanks to the power of editing, you guys won't be seeing that until, well, we actually beat the game. But, you know, normally by here, this is where the credit sequence kicks in, and normally you have to sit through that before you can actually go and fight the boss herself, which is always kind of weird to me. Like, uh, why, why put the credit sequence so early? I don't know, I, I, just, I just, I always find that jarring. Reminds me of like Sonic and the Black Knight on the Wii as well, where there's a credit sequence and then like not even an hour later there's a second credit sequence. Like, what's the point? Just have one who one big credit sequence, you know? But I digress. That is basically it for this part. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish people. And I'll catch you all next time as we actually reach the end game properly for real Z's and take care of Grunty the Witch. So yeah, thanks for watching, hope you all enjoyed, don't be sheepish people, I'll see you all next time. Bye!